Welcome to SVG TV's news for Wednesday, July 20th, 2022. I'm Triska Campbell with the details. The Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force Human Trafficking and Persons Department has retained its Tier 2 a rank on the United States Department of State Annual Trafficking and Persons 2022 report. The report, which is compiled by the United States Department of State assesses and grades countries individual, individually based on their efforts to combat human trafficking. Head of the department, ASP Junior Simmons, told SVG TV's news in an interview that retaining their tier two rank is an indication that the, the department is putting in the work to fight human trafficking. There are several tier placements that countries are placed on. There's the tier one, tier two, the tier two watch list, and tier three. So there are four different tiers that a country can be placed on. I'm pleased to report and announce to the public that for 2022, Simpson the Grand was placed on the tier two list. As a matter of fact, for the past six consecutive years, we have managed to, to, to have been placed on the tier two list. That is the second best tier. And to me, that means that we are doing tremendous work to combat human trafficking in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. ASP Simmons said much attention was given to crime prevention. Human trafficking is a, a global crime. It affects every country, no matter how small. Um, there's human trafficking in the, in the Caribbean. I believe that one of the reasons why St. Vincent and the Grenadines, you know, consistently has been placed on a tier two watch list is because of our emphasis on prevention. When you can prevent something from happening, then there's no need to, to deal with it. So our main focus is really on preventing the crime of human trafficking from ever taking root in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So what we have raised awareness about human trafficking throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We went to all of the primary schools on St. Vincent and in, in the Grenadines. We went to the community college. We train and sensitize churches, NGO groups, law enforcement, um, public servants, private sector. Because the more persons are aware of human trafficking, it is easier for them to identify what is human trafficking. And identification is key to the crime of human trafficking. That's one of the red flags. He gave the assurance that all cases of human trafficking are handled with the highest level of confidentiality and he is urging persons to report any suspected case to the nearest police station. Out there, know of someone who is a victim of trafficking or a possible victim of human trafficking, then they need to call immediately the anti-trafficking policy unit. You can get us at four five seven twelve eleven or four five six one seven five zero nine one one nine 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 or you can email us at SVG anti trafficking unit at gmail.com and we are also on Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's important that, that information is passed on to the relevant authorities, law enforcement, um, social services, Department of Gender Affairs, the the FAU, they are also stakeholders, the DPP's office. It's important that information is passed on so that we can treat with it effectively. Meanwhile, head of the Public Relations Department, Junior Simmons, urged citizens to partner with the police to combat crime in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. He noted a partnership is critical to ensuring the safety and security of all citizens. It affects all of us. None of us is immune to crime and wherever or whenever you know about a crime taking place or a crime took place, please inform the police. If you see something, say something. Because if you don't, then it means that a criminal would be allowed to remain on the streets 
for a longer period to antagonize and, and to, to, to assault other persons. And you never know when, you know, it, it could be you because, as I said, no one is immune from crime, not even the police, not even me. It can happen to anybody at any time. So that is why we need a collaborative approach between the police and the public in tackling and fighting crime. It's important that we maintain safety and security for our citizens. And it is a two-way street. The police have a part to play in ensuring safety and security. So too is the public as well. Every citizen have a role to play in ensuring that all of us are safe. The police alone cannot do it. So we need that partnership that collaboration with the public. It is something that we, 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 we talk about from now until eternity because we believe in it and it's, it, can, it, it works. So that's why, you know, we are, we are really talking about it. ASP Simmons says police will leave no stones unturned in bringing criminals to justice. So to the general public, I want to thank you on behalf of the Commission of Police and every other officer in the organization for your support. Um, to the police, we're asking you to, to double, you know, your, your support. We would also double our efforts as well in keeping you safe and protected from the criminals. And to the criminals, I want them to know that we, we are going to leave no stone unturned to investigate your crimes, to prosecute you, and to hope for a conviction in the court so that you would pay for the crime that you would have committed. If you do the crime, then you must do the time. Efforts to improve food security in St. Vincent and the Grenadines have been further strengthened with the launch of a food terminal at the former Lacqua plant in Mariaquois. The Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries in conjunction with the Global Medic Diamond Trust and local entrepreneur Mount uh, Montgomery King recently formed a strategic partnership to establish the Lakwa Food Terminal. Minister of Agriculture Honorable Sibota Caesar said that a global medic became a reliable partner during the efforts to provide emergency relief supplies to Vincentians affected by the Lassifre eruptions. A global medic, he said, is seeking to purchase an estimated EC $24,000 worth of food from farmers for local distribution every week. I wish to begin by thanking Global Medics, an organization which has been with us, assisting us to address the important issue of food security in St. Vincent and the Grenadines since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. And they stayed on and have assisted with bringing food to St. Vincent and the Grenadines to help persons who were grappling with the vagaries in the aftermath of the volcanic eruptions. There is a bit of a change that is going to occur in terms of the modalities for assistance. And I want to thank Global Medics for being an excellent partner and working with the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to bring about this very important change in that traditionally the food that was used to assist persons it was imported and they decided that they're going to purchase the food locally and have that food redistributed. Kathy Rigby, a volunteer with Global Medic, said the company bought 7,000 pounds of locally grown produce from the Vincentian farmers in just eight hours, valued at 11,000 EC dollars. Rigby said the charitable organization is happy to support local farmers and maintain relations with the Vincentian community.
Um, and Global Medic is a Canadian-based charity that ha uh, specializes in disaster response and humanitarian aid uh, for the last 20 years. We've been in St. Vincent since 2020, originally uh, sending out kits to prepare for hurricane season. Uh, so water kits, hygiene kits, uh, family emergency kits. Um, and we also responded to um, the volcano eruption last year with emergency food kits. And we're very excited to launch um, the produce um, site that we've got here going on, um, not only to support local farmers and to provide fresh, healthy, nutritious, um, fresh <laughs> uh, food for local Vincentians. Minister of Health and Parliamentary Representative for Mariqua Sinclair Prince identified marketing as one of the main issues affecting farmers. Prince said he is pleased that the program will continue throughout the remainder of the 2022 and later evolve into a permanent outlet for Vincentian farmers and consumers. Lacro has been put, as the Lacro boxing plant has been put to very good use here today as the as a terminal food market. Uh, Morocco has always been the breadbasket of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We are still the breadbasket, but we've had problems, apart from labor problems, we have problems in respect to marketing. And um, this particular activity, this program is going to help, is going to augment uh, what is being done with respect to, to, to the traffickers. We're going to create some kind of um, competition. At the same time, the farmers will get a better price um, for their produce. I know this has just started, but as soon as farmers understand what is happening, they're going to come here, bring their produce here, um, get the prices that they want, or, or, or even better prices that they're getting now. And at the same time, they'll be helping to feed the vulnerable people here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, we have had some problems in the past where farmers have kept their produce in the ground because it didn't make sense um, selling them for the prices they were getting. Um, this, of course, is another program by the government uh, in addition to the Love Box program. I've been told that this will continue until December. And after that, it is the hope of the Ministry of Agriculture to make this a permanent activity in Mariaqua, where we have a food market here. Farmers can come and look at prices, get the information they want, and then they can sell their produce. Minister of Urban Development, Senator Julian Francis, is giving the assurance that Operation Cleanup Kingston will take place soon. Senator Francis first revealed the government's plan to clean up the market area in the city following the removal of the vendors from Massey Compound in Arnesville last month. Speaking on Star Radio on Wednesday evening, he said a 200 additional vending stalls are being prepared by Roads, Buildings and General Services Authority Bragsa for vendor relocation. So who had the contract from the Ministry of Works to renovate three buildings in Kingstown to prepare some extra vending stalls, which produced about 280 new stalls. So Braxa is now finishing up that. Again, we got some extra monies for Braxa. And I am told today, and I inquired, that Baxa has promised that by July 31st, their work should be complete. So on the 2nd of August, local government and town board will be doing a walkthrough with Baxa in these three facilities. One is at the customs building, opposite Graves, supermarket, two of them, the other two are opposite the Iron Man. Senator Francis said Operation Clean Up Kingston will not be an easy task, but the government is determined to have it completed by Christmas this year. He also spoke about plans to regulate vending in the city. A lot of things we have to make clear in the whole process, and we have to stick to the guns. It is not a task that will be completed easily, but... I am determined to give this the final shot and to get it cleaned up. I project, I anticipate, I wish to have 
And I think we will have clean streets and cleaner streets in Kingston by Christmas. This Christmas shopping that's coming up in 2022, where we back on the outside. Public space is not for two dollars a day anymore. We can't afford it. We can't have Kingstown looking so dirty and ugly and cluttered. Prime Minister Dr. Alf Gonzalez received an award during the commendation of the 43rd anniversary of the triumph of the popular uh, of the popular Sandinista revolution. PM Gonsalves today completes a five-day mission, which included a visit to Venezuela and to Nicaragua, where he met with senior government officials, as well as Garifuna and Afro-Caribbean community groups. Speaking as a special guest of the President of Nicaragua, His Excellency Daniel Ortega, PM Gonsalf spoke about the relationship between St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Nicaragua. Those who want to subvert the Sandinista revolution should first learn from that example. Nicaragua and St. Vincent and the Grenadines work very closely at the United Nations. We are foundation members in the Bolivarian alternative for our America. We are integral to the community of states of Latin America and the Caribbean. We work closely in the association of Caribbean states. Now the empire doesn't understand that. You have a country which is 350 million people. They have the largest economy in the world. They are reputedly the strongest military force in the world. Nicaragua is 6.2 million people. A country in Central America seeking to develop itself and its people. Why in God's name, with a country so large, with so many resources, with such military strength, why would you want to pick on a small country like Nicaragua? In other news now, plans are underway to fully restore the island's primary health care facility. Over the last nine years, government and private donors have made contributions for renovations to be done to a number of wards. Hospital Administrator Grace Walters gave an update on the restoration work while speaking on API's morning program. She said so far work has been completed on the operating theater, the male surgical ward, the recovery ward and the dietary, depart dietary department. Walters also said a work is ongoing on the male medical ward, adding that the COVID-19 pandemic has caused some delays to the renovations. The government's plan is to restore the entire hospital. So we've started by wards because the hospital is a life plant. So we can't really close the entire, um, the entire facility to accommodate renovation. So we have to do it by wards. Um, we do plan to restore the, ma the maternity B and the females, female medical wards too uplift them and bring them up to the standard that we've, we've now put in place. Um, how that goes will depend on a lot of the um, health conditions that we see emerging and re-emerging. So our, our actions there would depend on what is happening with our population. If perchance the COVID um, COVID or the need for COVID admissions or COVID hospitalization reduces and if we maintain our zero monkeypox rate and if there are no more barring any other um, conditions that would warrant the use of the facility we will proceed as soon as we're finished. But Walter said the eruption of Lassifer volcano has worsened some air already weak areas of the institution's roof and attention is being given to repairing it. We had some leaks in areas that we had not um, experienced leaks before. 
So in, this, in all of the um, discussions with what we can do to restore everything, we thought we would take all of that into consideration and consider repairing the areas. We recognized um, before the volcanic eruptions that there are areas uh, on the roof that really needed repairs. For example, he spoke of the nails and we we already we've already started the process of replacing the nails with galvanized screws. What they've said is that it's more efficient, it's more effective and it prevents a number of mishaps with the with the roof. The role of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force is not only to make arrests but also to prevent crime through different activities such as summer programs, youth clubs and other initiatives. This comment was made by the Commission of Police Colin John during the opening ceremony of the Police Band Summer Program. He spoke about some of the programs that the police will be hosting to assist with crime prevention in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Sometime in August of this year, they should be having a camp, police, youth, work camp. So these are things that we are doing here to direct and to steer the youth in the, on the straight and narrow path. We also have the DEAR program. Admittedly, it was affected as other things by the COVID pandemic. We, in the next school year, will be reviving the DEAR program. So that is something, another aspect of preventative policing. We also have, as S.P. Simmons mentioned earlier, the Coastia summer program. These are initiatives where police we are seeing uh, we are showing a different or the softer side of policing. Police we are not only there to arrest and charge and to jack or some suppression, but our vested interest and our goal is to prevent falsely. So hence, we give you the necessary tools to steer you on the right path to life. The commissioner urged participants of the summer program to take the information and use it to become successful in life. And by doing that, you can be a better person. It's often said that your attitude determines your altitude, meaning if you put this positive traits and you generally exhibit those positive traits, it is very likely that you will reach very far in life or you are very, very successful in life. So I am encouraging you today to grab education, be valuable and worthwhile citizens so that the police will have less work to do and you would have less problems as you go to life. A 35 year old farmer of Salt Rivers has been arrested and charged with attempted murder. According to investigations, the accused, Stephen Chewitt, allegedly chopped a woman about her body with a cutlass. The offense occurred on July 15, 2022, in the Salt Rivers community. The accused appeared before the court in Georgetown Magistrate Court on Monday and was remanded into custody at Her Majesty's Prison. The matter was adjourned to September 5, 2022. In an unrelated case, police on Monday arrested Akel Roy Edwards, a 25-year-old laborer of Fitzhughes, for wounding. According to police investigations, Edwards allegedly wounded a 30-year-old unemployed man of the same address by striking him on the left side of his head with an aluminum crutch. The incident occurred at Fitzhughes on March 30, 2022. Edwards is expected to appear before the Kingston Magistrate court to answer to the charge.